Hello and welcome to the special episode. We are in conversation today with Dr. Paul Stoffels, Executive Vice President and Chief Scientific Officer for Johnson & Johnson Global. Thank you so much, Dr. Stoffels, for speaking with CNBC TV 18. You are the Hi, man to go to as far as innovation is concerned. Um, when you look at the global R&D pipeline and when you look at innovation, not only by j, &J but overall in the global arena, where do you see this R&D engine headed now? Well, I think uh, times for R&D and science have never been more promising than today. With uh, all the new science and technology emerging from the human genome, which we now can, uh, which we now can determine the pathways for uh, for drugs, the pathways for therapy, for cancer, for diagnostics, to early detection and treatment are unprecedented. At the same time, new new ways to approach diseases like cell therapy, uh, antibodies, vaccines, it all has gone so fast that now many of diseases are within sight to get cured. And that is what we have seen for several infectious diseases already. If you look at HIV, we now can have people live 40 years. Hepatitis C, you can get cured. Uh, many diseases can get cured now. And cancer is on its way to get cured. And so that's where uh, I think I'm very, very optimistic on the science and technology which is existing now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you talk of uh, you know, Johnson & Johnson in particular, in the last couple of quarters we've seen some of your, the bigger drugs sales drop because of some competition in the market. From the R&D pipeline to supplement the lost growth, what is it that you guys are betting on in terms of uh, the bigger products uh, on the pipeline which could uh, hit the markets anytime soon? Well, we have now more than 10 drugs which are blockbusters in the world or out of a new pipeline. And of course, if, if that moves on in the pipeline, the growth of those drugs are uh, start to slow down. But at the same time, we are introducing significant other drugs. We have a huge pipeline in cancer including Im immuno-oncology drugs, including direct anti-cancer drugs. We have additional drugs in, uh, with a big breakthrough also in inflammation. Um, we are working on uh, additional infectious disease drugs and uh, we have new drugs in neuroscience. So we'll continue and we'll launch in the next uh, three, four years another 10 drugs to into the market. So uh, I think the pipeline looks good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as uh, particularly cancer and HIV is concerned, there were some hiccups on the immuno-oncology side. You know, some of the companies have seen some bit of hiccups, particularly on the CAR-T therapies. Was it CAR-T therapies? Uh, what is it lined up from the j, &J side on that front? Well, we have um, 15 approaches to immuno-oncology. We came Later to the immunology, we have focused significantly on direct anti-cancer drug with big success. Uh, if you look at Imbrivica, if you look at Dazalex um, and uh, Zytiga, uh, three big drugs which make our business now, we started up immuno-oncology big time with 15 different approaches on very selective immunostimulation for oncology and that will uh, deliver over the coming years a very strong addition to our pipeline. The combination of direct anti-cancer drugs with immuno-oncology drugs will ultimately be the way to treat cancer. In the meantime, we do collaborations with other companies on immuno-oncology and make combinations for the patients which bring the benefit of immuno-oncology together with our drugs. And hopefully we can uh, cure a lot of cancer and bring a lot of uh, a quality of life to patients. Mm -hmm. When you talk of innovation, R&D and the entire pipeline, where does India stand in your entire bid to hit on the innovation pipeline? What is the work that you're doing currently in India? Well, you in had, India, you know, have somewhere stopped your clinical trials mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, but reinitiated that. Yeah, that's back. In India, we have uh, now, we started up uh, significant clinical trials again. Mm -hmm. uh, India always has had and now will have significant contribution to a pipeline. We do pharmaceutical formulation here, we have clinical teams here, we have data teams, we have uh, big data teams by the way here who contribute almost in every every step of our development there is contribution from India to, uh, to our products. In addition to that we have a few particular drugs when it comes to tuberculosis, a company made a new drug for uh, existing Exist, extreme resistant TB and MDR TB and bedaquiline and we are working with the government to make it now available on a much larger scale to all the patients who need it in, uh, in India. Diabetes is a big problem in India and everywhere in the world. With Invokana being launched in this country, we can make a significant contribution. And also the medical teams in India 
or learning on how to implement these drugs and uh, work with the medical community, do studies and, uh, and have more impact. So India is very important and it will become even more important for us going forward. Mm -hmm. When we talk of uh, you know, the work that you're doing in India from the R&D pipeline or the innovation side is concerned, would that work be restricted to doing data management and clinical trials or will India eventually or is there a plan in place to involve India uh, on a larger platform yeah. as far as the R&D is concerned? Yeah, we are doing very specific R&D now in the field of TB with Indian uh, institutions and that will even further expand as we go forward and will commit to, uh, to do significantly more. I'm very impressed with, uh, with what I learned in the last week here in India, being with the government, being around with the scientists in the hospitals. I think India has tremendous potential for innovation in, uh, in medicines, in healthcare. And uh, I'll, I'll tell the Indian people, you're the future because you have it all, all the capabilities, and now it's a matter of bringing it together and get new products developed here. So tuberculosis is one area where you're saying that India would be involved in a larger scale, which means proper research would be happening out of Indian? Uh... Yes, we are, we are working on, on that at the moment. Plans will be uh, made public later, but we are going to do uh, significant research here in India on TB. Okay, uh, particularly from the tuberculosis, uh, you know, drug Bedaquilin that you are working with the Indian government here and you've rolled out in a very limited access program that you're working. How is that progressing? There had been some, uh, you know, debates and discussions around uh, the compassionate uh, patient program yeah. and the limited access with which the drug has been rolled out. Uh, what are your thoughts? How, how yeah. is, uh, you know, j, j looking at the entire program? Here? Well, th this drug is a very special drug. It is intended for uh, extended resistant TB only and all over the world these are government programs so when we roll it out we have to work with the government train the healthcare workers the other combination drugs will have to be available and we work very intensively with the government all over the world in South Africa in Russia in in uh, in India where uh, uh, multidrug resistant TB is a significant challenge we we can bring the drug in the right way and in order to make it work it needs to be brought in that combination so we rolled it out in, an, in, an, in a small setting with six centers. Now the government has committed to roll it further out and uh, it will be available to many more patients soon. And we as a company were very committed to make it available. Two more questions. One is from the R&D side. You said you would look at involving India from the R&D uh, front on the tuberculosis bit. How would, we, you know, how would you be expanding the people base that you have uh, and also adding on from the incubators that you have uh, been working with? Well, that are all plans at the moment. We had meetings this week with the government here, and so in the next few months we'll, uh, we'll make them in detail and make the programs and have the further discussions with the government and the institutions. Uh, it will bring a lot of capabilities here, and uh, we'll see how much it result, will result in And in terms people. of uh, investments? Um, I can't comment on that yet. We, uh... Okay, just one last question. Uh, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, discussion uh, around the statements that Trump, uh, President Trump has made regarding uh, R&D pipelines, uh, regarding pricing of drugs, and regarding uh, dismantling of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, how does J&J look at, uh, you know, you are from the R&D side, how do you when, you, when you look at developing drugs and the cost that is involved with de developing drugs, uh, you know, what would your comment be um, um, with, in the discussion here right now? I have a very short comment. We continue to be focused on making, making a significant medical impact with the science we do, and I trust it will be relevant for society and people will like it and will need it. So I have no doubt at all that what we do will continue to be important.